moment in time that not only was pivotal from a historical standpoint, but from the fact that it was the last race that any of us have done in a long time. When I woke up the morning of Mid-South, I could hear the rain falling on the roof of the Airbnb. We knew it was going to be wet, we knew it was going to be cold, but we woke up to even wetter conditions and colder conditions than we expected. You know, it was pouring rain, it was cold, it was mud, peanut butter mud like I've never seen before. Cannon went off, we got rolling. We headed south out of town. Almost wishing as we rolled out um, at the neutral start, almost wishing that uh, the race would just pop off immediately because I was so cold, I just wanted to warm up. And then when it finally did, it was just all hell broke loose. I think maybe around the 20 minute mark, we started to hit some, some proper dirt. The mud just immediately cakes all over you, and you can hear the bikes moaning. The, the road conditions were pretty strange in that there were firmer sections, and then it would get really soft, and everyone would just, their tires would just sink in. You see riders just like, it's like they're shooting backwards. Often having to just tractor pull, power your way through as people were flying by you. And that's how the first hour or so went. You know, for me, I was worried about the, the drafting aspect and I wanted to make the race hard and make it attrition from the get-go. So uh, continually trying to force selections. Pretty quickly after the first uh, gnarly sector, there was uh, just, a, just a few of us. I think we're down to maybe made like a selection of 30 riders or so. And this is where people started really throwing body blows. So I think I was following Stetna, field that got really strung out, people were going really hard. And this was, turns out it was the lead into the busted out bridge crossing. I managed to um, show off some cross skills there and um, came through that big second wheel. Uh, as the first major move went, the first major selection around mile 20 maybe, um, I got a big stick stuck in my spokes. I remember having to stop and just thinking about the number of people you're seeing flying by you. And once I did get going again, the lead group was long gone, the second group was long gone. Couldn't even see the third group. We've got 10 guys now, and uh, the next decisive section, it was a really steep hill. Peter Stetna set tempo of that thing. I got dropped almost immediately, just kind of TT mode. Over the next several miles, I wound up dragging him back, and I think then we're in a group of five. Um, Payson and, and his teammate Dennis had missed out, but it was me and Danny, Colin, John Baker. We just kind of kept it rotating, rotating, uh, just kind of waiting until the, the second half. Slowly but surely, I made it back to the first chase group, and we heard that the lead group was a minute and a half ahead. And I remember thinking, darn, we're racing for a top 10 today. And luckily my teammate, Dennis Van Winden, kind of quieted me down emotionally and said, don't panic, Chase. We're gonna bring this back over the course of an hour, not over the course of 20 minutes. And um, Payson made it back. And about an, after about an hour, um, we made it back to that front group and uh, they were very surprised. <laughs> I think Danny had an unfortunate uh, derailleur mechanical, uh, so he dropped out of the lead group, rolled through the feed zone amicably. We kind of had a gentleman's agreement to just take a nice stop in the aid station, get our bikes clean. I remember getting to that first aid station, just the morale boost that that was. It almost felt like the race restarted for us, and from that point on, I just felt better and better. The pivotal point in the race for me and for the women's race was very early. So it's still early in the race, you know, we're still going full gas. Um, the first group with all the men takes off. And so I knew, okay, fine, if that main group of guys are gonna go, um, I'm gonna stay in this second group and that's where a lot of the women are anyway, so this is where the race is gonna be. There was one specific moment where I hit a section that I came to such a slow halt. And I remember seeing the group that was kind of off more to the right of me, just slowly getting away. And Hannah was in that group. And we're holding a great pace. And, and, and eventually I looked around and I didn't see any other women in the group. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm in a good spot. And in the lead, I want us to keep pushing towards that front group. In that moment, I remember specifically thinking, if I don't get there, that's the race. And it was it was just slowly getting away from the rest of us that ended up being in that third-ish group. And about three hours in, we reached the 50-mile mark, which is the only feed zone. And I hand my bike to my team to power wash it, and I'm sprinting to the porta potty, and I'm sprinting out of the feed zone. Someone asked me, you know, do you need more food? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. And I sprint off. 
Heading into Perkins, I knew that I'd be able to see where Hannah was um, leaving. It wasn't long after I turned onto that road that I saw her, and that meant 10, 15 minutes probably. Got in, went to the checkpoint, uh, saw my people, and they took my bike going through everything. I remember feeling rushed and uh, just took a step back and said, yeah, like, okay, you're right. I'll let you take care of that bike because you know what you're doing. After the aid station, things were great and then things were not great. There came a point where uh, Stetna started going pretty hard. I'm like, okay, something's gonna happen. The, the part of the course that everyone was talking about with that run up in the gnarly little ravine um, was coming pretty soon and I, uh, I made my move early. I was uh, following Peter's wheel through that whole thing. Um, wound up taking some really good lines and charged the run up. I uh, had a gap and we got over the top together, just the two of us. The race exploded and it was still 40 miles to go. Fortunately, I think I spent too many matches doing that. And uh, that was that was my last contact with the very t front of the race. Payson wound up coming over the top of me and um, just kept finding myself at the front until it was just Pete and myself. You know, and I, I looked at him and I said, you know, hey, like, Let's make this thing stick. I, I realized that uh, Pete had uh, an edge on me at that point. However, um, having Dennis back there, he played the team card and said, no, you know, I'm gonna sit on. So um, I put in another dig and luckily he couldn't quite hold my wheel. And he gradually started pulling time out of me very slowly walking away. And then it was just uh, every man for himself. Um, shortly after I left, Perkins, um, Lauren left either right before or right after me. We got to that unmaintained road and she was ahead of me. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm third. I'm probably okay with third. Like these are the things that are going through my head. <laughs> so the group had kind of split up at that point. I'm on my own. I found my good rhythm. I'm in a really great headspace. And maybe somewhere around hour five-ish, I reach back around my pockets for food and there's nothing there. I had packed enough for the time that I thought the race would last, but it lasted way longer than I thought and it was much colder than I thought. And when I placed my hands back on the bars, I thought, you are going to bonk, but you will survive. And somewhere in that next stretch, slowly but surely, I see Lauren off in the distance again. When I finally caught her, I was like, hey, are you doing okay? And she was like, oh, I, I traveled from Europe like yesterday, but she just said that she was gonna settle back in a little bit. So I took off knowing, okay, great, I'm in seconds. I knew I wanted to try and get to Hannah and I'm gonna keep my head down and keep going because something could happen and I could, uh, end up catching her. You know, we had reached a section where this incredible peanut buttery mud just started coating our bikes and making it almost impossible to ride. Um, and it seemed like Pete was <laughs> riding with a little more reckless abandon maybe through some of the, the deeper muddy sections. I was getting time checks, I was feeling good, pouring on the gas, um, and <laughs> Peter Vollers in, in the, the bumble came up next to me and was like, dude, you got this, just Take care of that damn bike. I jinxed him. I just said, dude, protect your bike, eat, drink, and protect your bike. And then after that, his bike completely seized up. As the skies dried and it got a little warmer, what was not normally rainy and soupy um, started to, to coagulate and thicken. I had a moment of lapse when I was I was eating a bar, you know, carrying after my body. Um, I just, I hit one line wrong. Um, I, I might have tried to shift or something just at the, in an inopportune moment. Um, and all of a sudden this, uh, you know, softball sized piece of mud just went up and through my derailleur and just torqued the whole thing. I was just focusing very intently on taking care of the bike. I would use my paint stir stick to wipe off the tires very frequently, take the driest line possible. And sure enough, unfortunately, Pete had a, a mechanical issue um, and I, 
inherited the lead. That just kind of started to spell the doom of my day. My derailleur was horribly bent. It would work for a little bit until something else kind of just forced a little bit of torque on it, and then that would go out, and I'd have to kind of kick at the derailleur or whatever. Colin was always there lurking, just barely within sight, and we just ended up getting this locked in this drag race for about 30 miles, where we were all within sight of each other. These long, straight, flat roads. So through the section, I caught up this Colin. He was parked on the side of the road trying to get mud off his bike. I passed Peter who was doing the same thing. There was this one point when we were all just walking and my bike was so gobbed up with mud and John Baker comes walking by and he's got the bike cyclocross style and as he's walking he's just flicking mud and goes hey Pete <laughs> and, and there goes the podium. At one point I'm riding in second with maybe 30 miles to go. I had a little misfortune of my own, had a crash, wound up getting repassed by Colin. For the last 20 miles, it was just myself chasing, it was Baker and myself and Payson all strewn across the same uphill mud slog. And I just was so happy to be riding towards the podium. Needless to say, the rest of the, the finish was just me slogging it out. So I rolled in uh, in fourth place, unfortunately. Um, you know, I had, I feel like I had the legs to, to do a lot more than that, but um, I just remember two things distinctly when rolling across the finish line and realizing that um, I defended my win. I just thought the day was over many, many times, so it just felt rather miraculous that um, we'd still won. And then the other thing was just thinking about Ben Sontag a lot. That was a pretty emotional uh, finish line there. A few miles later, the Jeep came and started filming me. I remember the Vermont Overland car coming towards me once we finally got to the pavement. The guy yelled out the window, you're the second woman. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And just thought, now I'm safe. And when I came around the final corner and I saw the finish line, the huge celebration, and so much excitement, I felt so joyful, but I also felt so far away. And so, you know, I kind of got ushered away and I got some medical attention and I did have mild hypothermia and it was gnarly. Yeah, and that was the race. I just remember being pretty grateful that I was in second and somebody finally confirmed that with me <laughs> as I was coming into town. When I think about the Mid-South, I feel happy and I feel excited. It was a memorable day by far. These extreme conditions always make for a really entertaining event. Being in that position in this race really gave me some optimism for, for the future. It's important to, to celebrate everybody's achievement together and, and to commiserate together. But yeah, it was um, a good time. Yeah, that's a race I'll always remember. <laughs>